We have a simple neural network written in TensorFlow, and we want to figure out some way to visualize the training. So you know, maybe we have a really long running network, we want to understand what's going on, or we just want to get a better understanding of how training is progressing. So we have a network, we're training, as you can see, it takes a reasonable amount of time to train. It's still pretty fast. But you can imagine if we had bigger images or a deeper network, it would take a lot longer. As you can see, we have to wait here. It's not instant anymore. And we want to get some understanding of what's going on. So say we want to track accuracy over time. TensorFlow is a really handy built-in way to do this. What we're going to do is we're going to add in a summary. We're going to call it accuracy, because that's what it is. And we're going to name each of our runs so that we can have some understanding of what's going on. This just gives us a nice date format. It gives you the day and the second timestamp. We then can name each of our runs however you want, just some string. So one hidden layer, 1,000 steps, and then our time string. We're using the format string here, which is a nice feature of Python 3.6. Then we call the merge all function. Finally, we want to make sure that we separate our test data from our training data. So we're going to define two copies of the file writer object, one for training and one for testing. They're exactly the same, it's just that we're going to call them at different times to preserve the data. Now we're going to run through our data set, and every 10 steps, we're going to record the accuracy of the model against the test set. So we're going to get the summary and the accuracy is equal to the result of running our merged variable, which is just the all of the summary steps that we define, which in this case is just accuracy, and then accuracy. Because we're using the test data set, we're going to call our test writer, and it's going to write out our summary. We'll also print out what's going on to the command line. If it's not a tenth step, then this is where we're going to run our training step now. We're going to do the exact same thing as above. We calculate summary and accuracy. Here, all we care about is summary. We're going to use our batch variables, as you'd expect. We're going to call our train writers, where we're the training data. And then we'll run this and we'll see the results. Then we'll run this and see the results. Then we'll run this and we'll see the results. Then we'll run this and we'll see the results. To actually look at the visualizations, we need to use TensorBoard. Okay, now that we've finished running our network, or while our network is running, we can use the TensorBoard tool that TensorFlow provides to look at the results. So we run this command from the command line, and then we can go to localhost on port 6006 to see the results. And so as you see here, for each of the experiments that we've run, we have the results recorded. This can be really handy. The thing that comes to mind is we can compare the training results versus the test results. You see that the training results are a lot noisier. This also lets us change things. For instance, we could try to see what happens if we add multiple layers. 